Hello. Uh, all right. Um, so once we get started, uh, or once everybody gets back here, I guess I will. Uh, I'll. Um, I will navigate the website, and you can. You all can kind of see it. I put a link to it in uh, the accessibility channel in Drupal Slack. Mm -hmm. Uh, feel free to play around. The username is admin. The password is Drupal. So, super secure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mike, Go ahead. I, um, I, I have uh, from, from a few days ago, I have a bunch of walkthroughs that I uh, recorded, as in I wrote text steps, awesome. uh, along with... Uh, along with anything I thought was frustrating, a lot of things that I thought were frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, we, so I've got a bunch of those and we could do those if you like, or we could do those on another, another time. Do uh, we want to record this? We could do if you like. Uh, I am, if it is recording. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, thanks for checking. I'm, I'm glad it is. Yeah. But I would the, rather hear your stuff, but, uh, but it really depends on everyone else too. Well, I'll, I'll tell you which walkthroughs I did. Um, mm -hmm. One was of the focus styles generally. So that's mm -hmm. a holistic, let's tab around the page. Mm -hmm. uh, another one was to do with the, um, what would you call it, the compact version of the menu. Mm -hmm. uh, and another one was to do with, uh, the, there, was, there was a few, few more detailed ones around things like, you know, how do the sub menus work and things. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I've got some to do with the, the, the horizontal version of the, the whole header as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, well, I think of those, the quickest one would be the, let's have a look at focus styles throughout the whole page. Totally. Yeah. So you have, you opened up and there's still an outstanding issue where like the, uh, the, the, the focus style between like the error status of an input form and um, the focus state are basically the same thing for, except for the red border, which isn't you know, like discernible for people that might be colorblind or something like that. Yeah, um, or, or a, a different color uh, setting on the device too. And uh, yeah, and that was mm -hmm. one of the things I was trying to like figure out how to, like what's the ideal scenario? And that's something that we could talk about too. So I, do you want to share your screen and do that? Or how do you want to do this? Yeah, I'll share a screen now. There's the button. Oh, except that the host has disabled participant screen sharing. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Just for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Who is the host? You are now the host. the host. Yep, there you go. It's working. Uh, um, I will share the whole screen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you should see a little text editor in my bottom corner and a uh, Firefox uh, in which is scrolling there. It looks so good. Move that out of the way. Um, and I'm going to get a, I'm going to move that up to the top and I'm going to get a little, uh, no, I won't bother with that. So I'm going to start pressing tab. I'm going to just, no, oh, load the page. This is fresh mm -hmm. and start, uh, it's ready. Okay. So I'm going to start pressing tab. Um, mm -hmm. Fantastic in a good way and also not so good. Uh, we've got a really clear skip link. So if I'm a sighted keyboard user, that's, that's gold to me. It's brilliant. It's, it's there. There mm -hmm. is a slightly weird thing going on with it, which um, that's not the style we had the last time I played with it, mm -hmm. but um, it's, it's, it satisfies WebCAG. It's, um, it's got the contrast. Um, mm -hmm. It's, visible when it's when it's focused it causes a kind of weird jump um i think i think that's that's not a webcag problem but i think it's a little bit inelegant um yeah, but there's okay. the, there's a nice there's a nice bit of white space up at the top there so instead of 
causing it to jump down. It might be just as nice if it, if it was absolutely positioned and mm -hmm. and didn't cause the rest of the content to jump. That that's yeah, not that, a webcam failure. That's just a polish to make it more elegant. Mm -hmm. I would I would posit though that it is an accessibility issue because. Um, Moving things that move unnecessarily can cause distraction uh, from a cognitive standpoint. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, so if you were to uh, press press tab a couple of times rapidly, I think the I think it would would probably count as an animation, even even though the CSS is happening instantaneously. Mm -hmm. It's um, boom boom. It's it's jumped and yeah. back again. So I, I would probably count that as a animation. Um, okay. But I went past it. Now I'm on the um, the Olivero. Uh, site name. It's got mm -hmm. what I think is the default uh, focus style for Firefox. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that's I'm on the home link. That's a default focus style. It's a funny shape compared to the. We've got this tall uh, mm -hmm. shape to it, which is passes but isn't so elegant. And here we go. And then, oh, that's interesting. There's a again a kind of funny shape, but it's it's got focus. And same thing again, and here we go. Uh, slightly different. There was there's a weird animation appears on that one, mm -hmm. and and that's got another different animation. Mm -hmm. um, that's the that's the uh, the browser's default one. I'm, I'm noticing we've got the browser's default uh, thing going on here, so probably we haven't implemented Olivero's own focus styles in many places yet yeah oh, no there's actually a bug we, we, like we did have focus styles on the main menus and um i just checked and yeah they're they're completely busted uh so so yeah like uh if, if you were to move your house your mouse over um we kind of doubled up the focus style with the with the hover state and then in addition it, it brings over the um uh like like if you, yeah, you see that like little border that pops out. That's that's what's supposed to happen on the on the hover state for that, and it, evidently it does do it on the on the uh, navig on the search thing there, but it's not doing it on the others. So that's something that we'll fix. Something something I thought was a bit odd about that is the dimensions involved. Um, yeah, because what we, what you've got there is uh, um, a I think this will probably be the case with the, the search icon here and probably with some of the shorter ones like about and home, you, you'd end up with a, a focus indicator that's kind of more than one more, uh, it, it, the, the distance between mm -hmm. the thing that it's indicating focus on and the actual thing that is indicating the focus. So the, the, the magnifying glass to the blue line, the distance there is kind of greater than, uh, like, like it's more than one whole line in, in line height terms, say. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite, quite far distant. Um, did we see one on the, on the, so, um, like if, if normally, so there's a focus state on like the down arrow buttons right there. Um, like if you, if you shift tab back, you, you can see that, that they light up the, uh, the a tags, like those focus states should be working, but I, there was some refactoring going on. That's, that's a regression like that. The, yeah. That's what it should be. Okay. Um, so a, like a couple notes here, like like if you if if you move your mouse above that, like how the how the link kind of or the underline kind of grows underneath of that. Um, well, move it on one of the ones that don't have like the drop menu. So like obvious, like I I, I try I intentionally tried to make the uh, the uh, click area for the hyperlinks pretty pretty tall and wide just for people like for uh you know touch devices um the design that we have of course designs can always be modified but the design has like that spacing in between in between that bottom border 
and that navigation. So if we move that spacing around, that's obviously going to affect the design, which is possible, but at the same time, you know, that's that, that would be a compromise to make. Is it lining up with this corner? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that was very accurate of me. Right. Um, I'm going to carry on because there's a few okay. other things that we notice as we as we as we tear around. Mm -hmm. So that that was a another one. So that had an outline and that had an underline and that had an outline and an mm -hmm. underline and that had an outline and an underline. Um, as we we go around these one these ones are interesting because these 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 links have an underline to begin with. And then when mm -hmm. they gain focus, the underline mm -hmm. disappears. And then, but the, the other way around for your other links here and in your, your header is that they don't have an underline, but they gain one. So that's like the opposite signifier to each other. Uh, is it important for, for the focus states to be consistent, like across? Yeah, I'll get to yeah. that, but we'll, we'll carry on because there's even more yeah. styles later on. Uh -huh. So you see these again. But, oh, here's one in the thing. Now, this was one which is a link. It's underlined, which is fabulous because I can tell it apart from the uh, rest of the paragraph text. But this one had a, a strange animation swipe thing and now it's got a colored background and an outline but the the one up here didn't get an outline but it got yeah. the colored background swipe so that's an inconsistency as well that is yeah, um, yeah. one of the other reasons why this is so important uh, apologies for the blinking but when you highlight those headers and they get the underline they end up looking just like links that aren't highlighted so then it can become hard to tell if, if you don't know the uh, yeah, exact so you can see that pretty clearly very hard because we have fostering inclusion I think is a focused link correct yeah and Drupal the tag and HTTP archive in the yeah above. yeah uh, I can't right now if I if I if my coworker distracts me with a stupid question and I look away from the screen and now I come back to the screen, I don't know where I left my focus. And the only way I'm going to know where I left my focus is by moving it. <laughs> so um, I might have to go back and then forward to figure out where I was. And so there's, there's a reorientation needing to happen there. Uh, more of the same, more of the same, more of the same. Uh, Soon, oh, now here is one where I do remember we had an issue to style it. This one has clearly had a bit more effort done on it. Mm -hmm. um, I actually really like it. It's, it's got, um, but it differs from the others. It's not dealing with underlines, it's dealing with outlines. And these aren't the default browser outlines either. Um, and I think that's very elegant. That's very, very clear. Um, that'll work with um, the, the distance as well between the, the numeral and the line isn't as great as it is in the, the header either. Um, and then well, lastly, that there's a nice one for the, for the other indicators as well. So the, the kind of overall conclusion I've got here is I think some, some have been styled and some have not. And, um, some have been styled and have regressed and you've, you've, you've lost it. Uh, the styling mm -hmm. has broken, I think. Um, some of these are going to look different in another browser because I'm seeing default browser styles and uh, in particular- Is that okay? Well, it, it depends. Um, the, there's arguments for and against that. One argument for um, designing your own focus styles is that the ones that the browser ships with are pretty crappy. Um, but the counter argument to keeping the ones that the browser has is that the user might already know what they're going to be. Um, what's definitely not good is having a mixture of browser styles and then your own focus styles, which have gotten rid of the browser style. Um, 
the, the second point I'd make is that we've got a, a, a wide variety of different focus styles. I think I've counted about um, footer, links inside of paragraphs, links that are tags, links in the uh, top level heading, uh, header menu and the sub links in the header menu and the um, the article headings. There was something like at least six mm -hmm. focus styles that are generally there, and and that's not counting the skip link. So I think the the difficulty with that is because I've been going around this really slowly, and it's a bit. This isn't how I normally get around a site. Um, I don't go tab, tab, tab. What I actually do is I kind of think what I tend to do is I, I scroll up and down the page and I'm not using tab at all. I'm using my, my scroll keys page up, page down, and I'm just reading the page and I think, Oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to want this. What the heck is area article. So now I'm going to go and find that. What the heck is area article. And what I, I didn't go tab, tab, tab. What I did was I just held down the key and the, the key repeat behavior took over. Mm -hmm. And I, and I and I overshot it a little bit, mm -hmm. but that's that's where having a, a whole bunch of different focus styles becomes difficult because with with each one you kind of with with a, with a mouse pointer you kind of know what you're looking at because you've got hand eye coordination where your eye is following the pointer, but with a tabbing there's no hand eye coordination, there's just your eye going where did it go. And the more different styles you've got, I think the more more mental hoops you've got to jump through. There's more recognition um, mm -hmm. of, hang on, which focus style, what does a focus style even look like on this site? Or what does a focus style even look like for this component? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, which, which focus style am I expecting to see? So it, the... Um, what I'd like to see, I think Umami did this really well, and Claro has done a bang up job of it, um, is having much more consistent focus styles where we stop thinking about let's design a focus style per component and let's design a focus style and, and use the whole same thing throughout. Um, and that more or less boils down to put a ring around it and have done with it and yeah a four-sided ring um the, the reason i say a four-sided ring was that that point that rain made earlier about we don't know whether that's a link that's focused versus a link in its resting state and and the other thing is that although the browsers vary with their focus styles uh the one thing they all agree on is you draw a ring on all four sides yeah. whether it's a dotted outline or a fancy blue glow or an orange glow or whatever, they all agree it's a four-sided thing. Okay. So, and, and there is no requirement or need whatsoever to have your hover and focus styles using the same yeah, no. thing okay. at all. Um, it can actually be beneficial to have them be different. Okay. Yeah, it is possible to have something in focus at the same time as something. So what's got focus there? It turns out it's the Drupal tag that's got focus there. But you you kind of, you know, if, you, if your mouse point is yeah. there, you can easily get confused with that. Okay. And um, even go if ahead. a keyboard user doesn't use a mouse pointer, um, the device still has one attached and there is a pointer somewhere. And the act of scrolling up and down can actually trigger hover. Yeah. Um, I, I had a question about the, um, <clears throat> if you look at the body links and the tag links, uh -huh. since they pretty much do the same thing, um, just the tag links, well, they're two different fonts, obviously, um, but they act the same way besides that. Um, would you say that changing the tags to be not bold or vice versa, changing the links in the body to be bold would be a fix for that? Or what would you suggest? What would be some of your suggestions for that specifically? 
I I don't think that the text weight is going to whether it's bold or regular weight is going to help either way for recognizing focus. Yeah, so, I, think, um, I think your text weight is actually excellent uh, from a cognitive standpoint um, because the the bold on the title and the bold on the tags is very helpful. Changing the text weight of a link arbitrarily within the content then um, could create other cognitive challenges. So the text weight on the links in the content should probably follow whatever the purpose of the formatting of that content is in the moment and not be changed by just because they're a link. But um, the, the key is just to make sure that the way that they're styled when they're focused is consistent. So the title, the link inside of the content, and the tags would all have the same focus style, whatever you decide. Not, not necessarily the same weight of the text itself, but what that border looks like or background or whatever it is, that it would be consistent for all three uh, and, and everywhere else throughout. Um, and that's gonna get you a, a lot further. But that I think should be four-sided, right? Is excellent. Yeah, four-sided. Yeah, always an outline, so. So yeah. there is, yeah. in terms of passing um, focus visible, which is uh, web, WebCAG success criteria says, as I tab around, I've got to see mm -hmm. what's got focus. It's doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the consistency which is confusing and WebCAG doesn't cover that. Yeah. Uh, the, there's an, another WebCAG criterion which is to do with contrast, uh, mm -hmm. non-text contrast, whatever has focus, the, the thing that indicates focus should have sufficient contrast. Mm -hmm. And here it's mostly good. I mean, um, but at the moment that Drupal tag has got focus and it, the thing that indicates it is that uh, pale, pale bluey gray mm -hmm. background. And I, I, just before we came online, I, I, took my I have a color picker up in my tool mm -hmm. bar here and I uh, grabbed it and um, took that away to a uh, little test call anyway the upshot is it's it's very poor contrast yeah uh, because right. it's it's the contrast between that that's the wrong link uh, the contrast between that uh, background and the page not the back not the background and the text what we're looking at is that contrast that's mm -hmm. how i could tell that the thing that had focus had focus because it was the blue against the page not the not the blue against the black text uh so that one doesn't pass no so that does have a three a, a three a three one contrast ratio correct yeah but it's it's currently a a um, one something one one point two but this one does now it's exactly the same thing, but because the browser's uh, oh, dotted no. line is there, that browser's dotted line actually passes. Uh, in with, in Firefox, it's basically using the CSS current color mm -hmm. um, for the outline. So that, that one actually passes, but that one doesn't. Yeah, okay. The, so the thing that tells you as focus has so, what I'm hearing, like my action, my action items on this are, are number one, find some type of standard focus state for almost everything, like maybe not skip link, but pretty much everything. Make it four-sided. Don't necessarily have those match up with the hover states. Probably have them different because I think the hover states are more of a design element anyway. And just have them be consistent. Make sure they meet uh, the contrast criteria and that they're noticeable and all that good stuff. Yeah. You, you've got some animation in your focus styles. Uh -huh. That's okay. And in fact, it can really help. Um, uh, back to that hand-eye coordination that you have for the mouse pointer, uh, but with focus, you don't know where it's going next. So the animation can be very helpful to kind of, you know, we pick up on the movement and go, oh, that's where it went. It's down there. Uh, the animation can be really, really useful, uh, but it should should shouldn't rely on the animation 
mm -hmm. and the animation should be something that you can turn off uh, with the probably just make it respect the prefers reduced motion. Mm -hmm. um, there are some other focus styles on the forms. There are some other focus styles on the uh, um, compact version of the menu. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't written notes on those ones, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, this is one of the forms. I thought the radio buttons were excellent. Yeah, we took a we took some of that from Clara. <laughs> That that's a thing of beauty. Yeah, uh, that's, that that is indeed. Um, I haven't seen any chat boxes knocking around, but if you followed a similar principle, it would. Yeah, they're the same. Um, so the the difference between this is that red outline. What you're expecting to see for a an error state, or is that? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. No. I don't I'm, I'm not quite sure what that red outline is. Is that's not? An, uh, is is that like a uh, maybe HTML5 like I was invalid? One, I was wondering outline? that. Yeah, I think it would be. Um, there's a little contrib module called Disable HTML5 Validation. Oh, scroll down on the right hand side and check the box. I, I added one of those. In oh, there. is that in one of these? Yeah, it's at the very bottom, uh, right. Well, the, like the checkboxes aren't aligning properly. Right above clear required attribute, the, like the very last checkbox. That's it, right. Right there. So, so Ooh, the, is that what you were expecting checkboxes to look like in the main? main yeah, page? yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, that will probably do. I, th I think that blue isn't... It doesn't look good there. contrast level on the blue, but yeah. touch wood, that might be okay. I think that blue isn't working very well against this gray. But yeah, well, that it would sound, against the, like, yeah, yeah, on that developer tool. Yeah, so now so, you should be able to submit it. You submit it, it doesn't, it's your next connection. Okay, so that's what we see when we don't have uh, the um, okay, so that's your, your um. There, we've managed to get a uh, error state and a normal state in the same same view, right? Mm -hmm. So the and we've got one which hasn't been touched. So look at look at the grey one, the phone and the email. That's a a, a a box that doesn't have anything going on with it. Um, address is the one that we are focused on, and then the thing up here with other is the one that has an error. Now the difference between the, the one that has an error and the one that has focused is very subtle. Um, I mean, it's blindingly obvious if you've got color vision. Yeah. Um, but what we've done is it's gone from this uh, single border, the gray one, to um, having a four-sided border. And that's exactly the same thickness. It's exactly the same style. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that's different is the color. Um, there is this tiny little halo shadow thing. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as you kind of get into nice, bright ambient lighting, or you have a, a minor, e even, even a minor visual impairment, I don't think we can rely on that halo being, that, that halo may as well not be there. The other thing is, is that we, we can't just rely on contrast. We can't rely just on color, right? So that part yeah. of red outline, we should have a little a little icon that says that there's a something that indicates that there's a problem with that page or that other. So, it, it would also um, be helpful to give more clarity on what's wrong. Um, so some kind of a I, I guess you do have it there, but it, it's so pale it's very hard to see um, yeah. what what users are supposed to do. I'd yeah. go for shape change. I'd distinguish I, these with a shape, um, and that would probably be sort of a warning arrow triangle in there, say. A warning arrow? Uh, er, er, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, you know, like a, a warning icon inside the arrow fields. You, you I need helped to get... work with Claro on that, and so I think um, with their error messages and adding the icon and the error message, I think that we should just look at Claro and emulate what they did. Yeah, that uh, can kind that's, of look... That's, what I worked 
yeah. it can kind of work well for text boxes. You, you could you could have the the icon appear in the field, or you could have mm -hmm. the icon appear next to the label. Uh, either would be effective, I think. Um, subject to you know real users. Uh, where it gets a bit tricky is how do you how do you indicate that 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 a radio, where where do you put the icon for a radio set? Uh, it's less obvious where you put it. Um, but you could go for an entire kind of border around mm -hmm. the, the, the field set. Um, and, and then, you know, the, the, the error icon would be inside the field set because the, the error message, if it was in line, would apply to the whole field set there. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so I, I just have, to have two time, time considerations. One, Andrew, in your time zone, what time, what time is it? Oh, it's half two, but I'm not really in my time zone. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm geographically located in the UK, but that's nothing to do with when I'm actually awake. So more practically, we have about 10 minutes left before this, Zoom, this other free Zoom call ends out. So, yeah. so I think it might be worthwhile to just sort of say, how do we, how do we focus in on what is... Michael, what do you need in the next 10 minutes to try and, and, and see that you're, you've got the next steps covered? Because there's, there's a lot more work to be done for sure. And yet, we don't want you to, this will be recorded. I've already got the first half up on, on, uh, on YouTube. I'll share that shortly. But, but what do you need now to help, help you get more confidence moving ahead that you're, 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 you're getting what needs to be done? Yeah, so let me maybe re like repeat back some of like what the action items are. So Ari, uh, and and then, and then from there we can kind of go for. I I really like 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 the stuff that Andrew's going through here. Um, so like uh, so, so so my action items. I already talked about the focus states. I'm gonna have a, a similar focus state, four sided. It's going to be different than the than the hover states. Um, on the inputs, um, one of the main issues is uh, the the error state is very similar to the um, to the focus state. And then, if you and honestly, if you were to go to a focused error state, it looks like a regular error, st error focus state, and all those probably need to be fixed. And um, so, uh, an option for that, like number one. Uh, look to see what Claro did. Cat uh, uh, has worked on that. Another thing that Andrew mentioned is put either some type of icon inside of that or an icon to the side of that. And at that point, we can do that. And then, like, if it's a whole field set with a radio button, kind of do the whole thing with that, too. And I think all that is, all that set is doable. Um, so that's kind of my plans going forward i would love to hear more honestly from andrew if 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 you if you have time and and i'm i'm also curious about like the, that always on mobile navigation stuff too yeah you can edit the site name to see how see how it interacts when it's wide yeah i was playing with the chat box styles there yeah, they're all messed up in Firefox, man. I don't, I don't know why that's happening there. They should just be like Flexbox right next to each other. Um, just need to do more testing. I thought I did some. So, um, Michael, how can we how, how can we make sure that there's always kind of a, a current version that everyone can play with available uh, is there a place that you can continually sort of post an updated link if the link changes i totally can yeah um and i was actually like i filed an issue in the tugboat issue queue today to see like i would like a persistent persistent link but in the meantime what i can do is i can just have a short link like a bitly link or something that like that yeah. and i could just keep that updated mm -hmm. um and like I, I, I like I created this right here so I could like edit the you know username and password and give it to everybody. Um, but I, I I can just give you the default stuff and you can just like watch the latest like dev like like it rebuilds automatically every evening, and it's just like the latest you know commits and usually there's it's it's moving pretty fast so there's commits every day and stuff does break as as you're seeing right there. Ah. <sighs>
So as far as next steps, I, I am going to have to jump off the call. And I, if Andrew was, you know, willing to stay up until wee hours with you, um, <laughs> that's awesome. But um, I just want to make sure that you have what you need in terms of a, a plan before I leave this call. Um, and I, I would definitely encourage you to write out those sort of stories, those default stories, and, and put them into the site itself. Um, the, the test site so that you can enlist your uh, the community on the whole to participate and give them sort of you know people might do their own thing but at least you're giving those who want to participate a way to mm -hmm. um, and then I can certainly help you come up with kind of a, a checklist of uh, I'm, I'm volunteering to to help you uh, over you know a combination of slack and a Google Doc to come up with that checklist of those various things that will need to be tested the way that Andrew is going through these focus states with you. Um, and Andrew, if you can share what you have already done, um, then then great, we can sort of start with that and then I'll build off of that with Kat and Michael. Okay, that so yeah, that all that sounds good. I. Um... I appreciate you volunteering like it's a lot that's in front of me like it's been like how do I say this like it's been like mostly me has been doing all this stuff so like I, there's a lot in front of me and like I know this is important and it's man like and it's like one of the most important things but it's 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 a lot if if anyone wants to get in there I would I would love to have ideas and stuff like that um, All right. Well, follow follow up with me afterwards with a, a Google Doc or or something that we can co-edit mm -hmm. um, that has what you're already thinking about as far yeah. as what those stories will be um, mm -hmm. and what your components are since you've already been doing a lot of that work. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then I'll follow up with Andrew regarding the sort of pinpointed audits that he's already been doing. Um, so that, so that we know what, what those are, and then we can build your plan off of that. Okay. I don't want you to leave this call feeling overwhelmed. This, this is doable. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's doable. I'll get it. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and it's really, it's really nice to see what you've done with the focus dates. There are definitely problems with them as Andrew's pointed out, but it's so much nicer to have them, to have, be thinking about them and planning for them. And that's something we didn't get into to, to Drupal 8. And uh, so nice to have that as part of 9.1. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about it. And like, and, and the 9.1 is still like fairly ambitious. Like, you know, we submitted our first ever core patch today, which is gonna be like, you know, there's all types of issues with it, but we're documenting those. But talking to people like Gabor and Lowry and stuff like, um they need to like kind of it needs to be being committed somewhere in august early august ish um which doesn't like that's like a month away and that's the alpha deadline right i think so yeah yeah and that's like uh, yeah and i i think it's actually like it might even be put but that, that that's what they said and like man there's that's a lot of so, there's so, a lot of work in front of us but a, a thing i remember that i think it was tim millwood uh from the workflow initiative said he he had a, a lovely phrase he said concentrate on getting stuff into drupal core don't worry about getting it into 9.1 versus 9.2 okay. as much just it it's ready when it is ready when it's ready mm -hmm. i know that um some of the strategic initiatives have a kind of urgency to them but well, this it's one really is just like a community it. one, you know, so. And it will go volunteers. in when it's good enough. Yeah, right. Rather right. than when it's perfect. Okay. Well, I appreciate it's you saying that. It's not the gate. It, it's just not, no matter what you do. So the cool. fact that you're addressing this is, is amazing. And as yeah. you, you know, as a community initiative, once it's released, the community is going to help you.